Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we are getting started with Al Ewing's The Immortal Thor, which doesn't waste any time taking the challenges of all bother Thor to the next level. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so before we dive in, I first wanna talk about a couple of updates that had taken place not long after Thor's battle with Mythos. Cause back in Asgard, after Sif had fully recovered, this was followed by a reveal that even caught her off guard a little bit with her seeing Thor go back to his classic outfit, which in a couple ways, it does look like a more modern version with heavy inspiration taken from your journey into mystery days, of course. But nonetheless, going forward for Thor, he's decided that he's bringing back this look for the foreseeable future, which really makes a lot of sense. Following the events that took place in the 2023 Thor annual issue, where we saw All Father Thor doing quite a bit of self-reflection and thinking about who he is at his core, even if he wasn't on the throne of Asgard. But to take it a step further, since Thor is the king, Mjolnir is truly his, and its magic is his to command and to bestow. And with Thor considering Mjolnir as a part of himself, he gives the hammer the same treatment by reforging Mjolnir and making it good as new. Which again, these things are just another part of Thor, stepping into the role of Allfather his way. But with seeing this, Sif asks him if he thinks that it's wise to use the all power like this to turn back the will of fate, only for Thor to tell her sometimes the will of fate turns all around, sometimes it brings us home. And this statement coming from Thor seems to be the tone heading into Immortal Thor. Because when this begins, the wheel is referenced yet again, as we're shown a figure in the shadows and we're told, if you would understand, then open your mind. There are 10 realms on the world tree, 10 realms of gods and magicians, of elves and dwarves, angels and dead souls. 10 is the number, 10 there are. So here was no realm as we count realms, and those here were not gods as we count gods. For the gods are creatures of story, and the story is a shadow play cast on a cave wall. What casts the shadow then? What could block the light? As we then see this figure say, the wheel turns. And after that, we're asked the question, understand ye yet, or what? And this now sets the stage for fate to bring back someone, or better yet, a group of someones who the stories have tried to hide. And after this, we then head over to Asgard, the Golden Realm, which right now is more silver, with it being rimmed with ice and buried in snow because of an attack from Skymir, the Jotun wizard, who wants to place the Asgardians into a frozen sleep by covering them with a frozen night that has no morning. And though the Warriors Four are well aware of Skymir's capabilities, with the wizard having enough magic to have his head blown off and grow back, even still with him coming here, the threat that he poses, it's quickly eclipsed by the arrival of Asgard's king. And when Thor shows up, we continue to get this narration saying that the king of Asgard had indeed come to battle, but he did not stand, he soared. And it goes on to talk about how Thor is gone by many names and titles, the Thunderer, the Avenger, Allfather, with Mjolnir having other names too, like the Crusher. But in spite of this flattering narration, Skymir and the other Frost Giants aren't as impressed because the wizard expected a bit more than just Thor to be a response to his attack on the Realm Eternal. And with Thor arriving here, he's not in the mood to go back and forth with any witty banter. So Thor says that he's just gonna speak plain and that he's deeply disappointed. And it's a statement from the Allfather that catches Skymir off guard as him and the other Frost Giants just laugh in Thor's face. Cause to them, the way Thor's talking is like he's about to put them to bed without supper. But Thor lets them know that they are mistaken because he's not talking to them, but instead he's talking to his unfaithful servant, which is the sky. Because a storm of snow is still a storm and it's Thor's to command. So Thor tells it, what mean you by coming here at a clumsy hedge wizard's bidding? What mean you spreading icy chaos in your liege lord's domain? You are but a little blizzard. So this once Thor shall be merciful, be gone from here and we will say no more. Which right there, with Thor commanding this little blizzard to cease and be gone, the skies immediately clear up and the warm sun shines yet again on the golden realm, which quickly causes the frost giants who came with Skymir to reconsider and retreat, lest the sky father be disappointed in them too. Cause also with the blizzard gone, the snow is melting and so are they. So Thor lets them go, cause these other frost giants, they're still young and he knows the Asgard's army would just cut them down swiftly. But Skymir sees Thor's mercy as a sign of weakness and he pretty much tells him that Odin would never. So he then goes to use his magic to turn Thor into a rodent 
while declaring that he has taken the name Utgard Loki. And Skymir tells Thor that he only needs to hit him one time, and it's done. But of course, Thor's no dummy, so he moves. But as Thor is dodging this transformation spell, he gives Skymir one more opportunity to just turn around and leave. But the giant just reminds him, telling Thor that he can dance all he wants, but all he needs is to land one hit one time. So Thor just lets him know, if Mjolnir could speak, Mjolnir would say the same as he throws the hammer at Skymir's head and one-shots the guy, which really is one of those things in Skymir's defense. Thor is also kind of the god of auto-aim because he just needs to throw the hammer and Mjolnir will do the rest. <laughs> Mjolnir will find its target. So really, this fight was over well before it started. But even still, Thor and the Warriors 4, they're well aware that Skymir's grown a head back before, so he hasn't died a true death today. And though it is a small victory for the moment, for Thor, the bigger issue is that these giants are from Jotunheim, and Jotunheim is ruled by Loki. And Thor needs to know if Loki tried to prevent this or if he encouraged it. And right there, speaking of the devil, Loki just pops up, revealing that he'd been here the whole time. But when Thor questions Loki about being the ruler of Jotunheim, Loki just casually tells him that, oh, that didn't work out which right away strikes a nerve with Thor, because Loki claimed the throne of Jotunheim, only for him now to abandon the responsibility. So Loki tells Thor not to force this on him, because at the end of the day, the Jotun can rule themselves, and so can Loki. But Thor reminds him that he has strong memories of Loki's prior mischief, and he wants to know what's brought Loki back to Asgard. And Loki convinces Thor that he's come back because he's the god and the goddess of the story. And where else would he go besides where the stories are? As Loki goes on to tell Thor that he's come back, to restore the Rainbow Bridge. But if you guys remember back in our talk on Thor issue 27, Legacy issue 753, Loki had already attempted to restore the Rainbow Bridge before. He tried for hours and was unsuccessful. So now with Loki saying that he can just whip it up, Thor is quite suspicious. Then he asks Loki, what kind of dark bargain have you made allowing you to have this power all of a sudden? And in response, Loki tells him that he's able to do this with the wand of whatever jam-packed with mystery magic from the elders of the universe, which he found in the collector's vaults during a minor adventure. But Thor just stops him right there because it's probably better that he doesn't know the details of his escapades. So he tells Loki to get on with it, make his attempt as Thor gets behind him just in case if this backfires like it did last time. And in case you missed it, I got that video linked in the description. But as Loki goes on to restore the Rainbow Bridge, we're told that his wand is just a prop, a prop with a pretty story attached. And that lie hit a deeper magic at the heart of that magic was a question, carried like an ember in a clamshell from creation's highest point. We are told what is possible for us, what is allowable, who we are, who we can be, who we shall be. The stories have their patterns, the gods have their Ragnarok, even Thor has a black winter hanging over him. But what if spring could come again? What if green shoots grew where nothing could? What if the future was unwritten, the present uncontained? What if we can go anywhere, do anything, be anyone? What if we were free, all of us, gods and mortals, me and you? What couldn't we do? On the day all our cages open, what would that look like? Tell me if you can. What does the bridge to anywhere look like? Does it look like this? As Loki strikes the ground with his wand and the rainbow bridge returns, which for Thor, this is something that he couldn't be more excited for. While Loki, on the other hand, he knows the truth. And the truth is there's no journey without a trial. There's no spring without winter and there's no magic without a cost. And already, he's sorry for what he's done. But as Thor and Sif are admiring the return of the Rainbow Bridge, Sif says it's stronger than ever before, while Thor says yet it seems as fragile as spun glass, as fragile as joy. And he swore oath to his father in Valhalla to do less brooding on his throne. And now that the Rainbow Bridge is back, Thor feels like he's done with the brooding, cause now his heart is light again. But when Thor turns around to thank Loki for this, Loki disappears. And just like that, Thor's fragile joy turns into troubles again, with Loki's quick exit causing some concern. And Sif calls out Thor on this, cause he's already going back to the brooding. And she goes on to suggest now that the Bifrost is back, Thor should pay a visit to his other home, which is precisely what Thor does as he makes his way to Midgard, which for Thor is very much like a second home, or even a sibling depending on how you look at it, with Thor's mother literally being mother nature. But with him coming here, he signs autographs, takes pictures, plays a game of chess, cause he doesn't see the people of Earth as his worshippers, he sees them as his friends, whether they be human or mutant. And we see examples of this as Thor's day just flashes by, as he's told that a mutant is being treated unjustly. So Thor rushes in to help, cause that's what friends are for. And he even makes the time to hang out with them after. But moments later, when Thor leaves to be alone with his thoughts, while he's here, it begins to rain. 
and that rain grows heavier to a huge thunderstorm, which isn't too bad for the thunder god, but it's way too much for the mortals. So Thor orders the storm to be gone and for the skies to be clear again, only for thunder to strike the Statue of Liberty, sending Thor crashing to the ground. And when he looks up, he sees a towering figure emerging from the skyline, approaching him saying, the wheel hath turned. And too long has this world stagnated, too long have you chosen illusion over change. You sleepwalk through a dream of life, but I am the bloody awakening. I come to you from Utgard, the storied land that is the land of true things. I've come to shatter thy false world apart. As he then reveals himself to be Toranos, the Utgard Thor. As he loses his thunder on the city, devastating the skies all the way down to the subway. And as is told in Utgard, the Shadowlands, the beings there are to the gods as the gods are to the mortals. So for a moment Thor, he does feel fear, but he's able to quickly shake it off and call for his father's might, the Odin power that now flows through his veins. And he strikes Tornos, summoning the all power against him. But with Thor doing this, Tornos doesn't even budge with this blast causing the earth to tremble at a war that is just now beginning. And just after this, elsewhere, we head to a conversation where another shaded figure is speaking over his shoulder, saying that our brother Tornos walks in the world again, and only your son bars the path of his rage. It's all as you wished it to be, Sister Gia? And she tells him this isn't what she wished, cause she wouldn't have unlocked what she had sealed millennia ago, if there were other options. But while they're here in this prison, in Utgard, where Gia has locked this brother of hers away. He goes on to ask her about Thor facing a Tornos before, and she tells him no, it was Tannerus, and it was but a troll who made corruption of the name years ago, when it faced Thor posing as Tornos. And her brother goes on to say that Thor is not facing a troll this time, and if he fails, it'll be the end of all that is. Because the rule is clear, all things must live and grow, or wither and die, and this Age of Marvels is no exception. And Gia agrees while letting her brother know Odin's foundling, Loki, is at the door. The trickster who plays no favorite aside from the story itself. And her brother just laughs, saying that he remembers Loki, the talesmith. And he goes on to tell Gia, his sister, his jailer, his ancient foe, that she brings him sweet laughter here in the Hall of Utgard. Because if Thor can be tested by the foundling Loki, then the Utgard Loki will destroy him utterly, himself which now just sets the stage to where Thor's gonna have to tap into some of that power on his mama's side if he's gonna make it out of this alive. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special thanks to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.